Hello, my name is Alex. I had an operation on my tummy when I was six. I found coming into hospital for an operation was a bit of a funny feeling as I didn't know what to expect. So I'm here to tell you a bit more about your visit so you can be a bit more prepared. Usually you come into hospital the week before your operation to have a look around. You get to meet the pre-assessment nurse who will chat to you about what it will be like to come to hospital. They will ask some questions about you and your family and tell you about the operation. They will give you a booklet that you can read when you get home. They will also weigh you and may listen to your heart. You can ask them any questions that you can think of. On the day of your operation, you will have been asked to have nothing to eat six hours before your operation. This means that if your operation is in the morning, you must not have anything to eat after 2.30am and can have a drink of water before 6.30am. If your operation is in the afternoon, you can have breakfast before 7.30am and drink water up to 11.30am. This might make you a bit hungry, but you'll have plenty to do to keep your mind off things. When you come into the Royal Berkshire Hospital, you will either come to the Lion Ward, Dolphin Ward or to the Kempton Daybed Unit. They are all on the third floor of the central part of the hospital, so if you come in at the main entrance you can ask for directions. When you get to the ward, one of the nurses will show you to your bed space. There is also a playroom on every ward full of lots of different toys, colouring, arts and craft, books, dressing up clothes, so there will be plenty of fun things to do while you wait. There are televisions and DVD players that you can use, we also have some Nintendo Wii's and DS's as well. And you can, of course, bring in a toy or game or cuddly from home. Your grown-up might want to bring in something to listen to, read or do to. A nurse will come and talk to you and your grown-up. They will check your name and date of birth and give you two name bands to wear. They will put some white cream on the backs of your hands or on your arm in front of the elbow. This is a special magic cream which will stop anything from hurting by making the skin go all numb. One of the play specialists will then come to see you. They'll find an activity for you to do to keep you busy and chat to you and prepare you for what will happen throughout the day. If you're worried, this person can spend some time with you to help make you feel a little bit happier. The anaesthetic doctor will come and see you too. They will want to know if you are well now and whether you have had a recent cough or cold, as sometimes this means that it would be better if your operation happened on a different day when your cough is better. They might want to see how wide you can open your mouth and stick your tongue out, and listen to your chest with some special tubes to see how your heart and lungs are sounding, which can feel a bit cold but doesn't hurt at all. They will want to hear about any previous anaesthetics you have had, and they will explain what they are going to do and ask you if you have any questions about the anaesthetic part of your operation. The surgeon will also want to see you. They will know all about the operation you are about to have, but might want to check that nothing has changed since you were last seen. They will explain what they are planning to do and check that you understand all about it and are happy with the plan. They might draw an arrow or a funny face on your body where the operation is happening to make sure that they are in the right place. If you have any questions about the operation, this is the person to ask. Lots of children will have an operation on the same day as you. Unless you are very lucky and are first on the list, there is usually a bit of waiting at this point. But there can be plenty of fun things to play with or you can just watch TV. When it is your turn, the nurse will take you and one of the grown-ups with you. Usually just one, as it can be a bit of a squeeze, down to the anaesthetic room. This is a bit of a walk down a long corridor and through some big doors. A play specialist might also come with you with a book you like the look of. In the anaesthetic room there will be a trolley and lots of machines. There will be a lady or man who will say hello and ask you a few questions and check your name band. The anaesthetist will also be there and you will see that everybody is wearing the same pyjama clothes and funny hats. Depending how old you are, you might want to lie on the trolley or sit on your grown-up's lap. The nurse or play specialist who has come with you will look at the book with you or blow some bubbles, while somebody gives your arm a small squeeze so that a special little straw can be put into your hand, 
where the magic cream has made it go all numb. This special straw means that we can give you all your medicines straight into your veins without you having to swallow them, which is probably a good thing as I don't think they taste very nice. There are two ways to drift off to sleep. One is to have some magic milky medicine through your hand and the other is to blow up a balloon through a special squidgy mask. The anaesthetist will talk to you and your grown-up about which one would be best for you. Your grown-up will stay with you until you are fast asleep. There are also some special stickers that will be put on your chest to see the electricity in your heart and a peg that goes on your finger so the doctors can see how much oxygen is whizzing around your body. These don't hurt at all and it is just so everyone can keep a close eye on everything while you are asleep. After your operation you will go to a recovery room where a nurse will look after you until you have woken up and then your grown up will come and pick you up with your nurse from the ward. You may feel a bit sleepy for a while after you return to the ward. The nurse will check that you are okay. She will check your temperature and your pulse. When you feel ready, you can have something to drink and eat. Depending on what operation you have, some children can go home the same day and some have to stay overnight. If you need to stay the night, your grown-up can stay with you. When it is time to go home, you will be given advice about your recovery and any medicines that you need to take at home. There will be a phone number you can ring if you have any worries about anything after you have gone home and you will receive a telephone call from one of the nurses the next day just to check that everything is going well. It is really important that you get the right amount of painkillers after your operation so there is a doctor coming on next to talk about that. Well that's it from me. I hope you have a really good operation. Mine went fine and I felt loads better afterwards. My name is Dr Sarah McDool and I'm one of the anaesthetists here at the Royal Berkshire Hospital. Several recent surveys have shown that many children do not get enough pain relief after their operation. It can be difficult to know how much to give them and when to give it. So this short section is about getting our children as comfortable as possible after their operation. There are two main painkillers that we use here in the hospital. These are paracetamol and ibuprofen. These will be given to your child before the operation in the form of a pre-med. When you leave hospital, the nurse will advise you when the next dose is due. Giving regular pain relief and helping your child stay comfortable reduces the body's stress response to surgery and can help with mobilisation and healing. Paracetamol can be taken every four to six hours, up to four times a day, and ibuprofen can be taken every six to eight hours, up to three times a day. What is interesting is that these two drugs work in different ways, and so they can be given together. Not only that, but if you give them together, they will work better and for longer. Because of this, it is a good idea to take them together, especially in the evening, because this will give your child good pain relief for as long as possible overnight. Sometimes, if it is going to be a bit more painful, then you will be given a third medicine added in to the paracetamol and the ibuprofen. This third medicine works in a different way again, and it is perfectly safe to give your child these three medicines, as long as you take the correct dose as advised by the hospital. Painkillers work better when given regularly, rather than waiting for the pain to get really bad. Some people find it helpful to give a dose of the medicines with each meal, and to reserve one dose of paracetamol for the middle of the night if your child wakes. Other people find it helpful to set an alert on their mobile phone and this will remind them to give them the next dose. Studies have shown that good pain relief is important when recovering from surgery. Pain is treated best by giving both painkillers regularly for the first two to three days. After this time, you could stop one of the painkillers and carry on with the other. Then, after another couple of days, you could try dropping one to two doses a day. This way, we will make sure that your child is as comfortable as possible as they recover. We would really like yours and your child's experience of surgery to be as positive as possible. If you have any further questions, please do ask any of the nurses or doctors that you meet in your visits to the hospital.